Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I'm going to show you something fun today. So I did this accidentally on the previous video when I was reviewing this multimeter. And I think the reason being because the previous one of these thermal camera multimeters, which I use quite often, only has two leads. That's because this doesn't have a current range and this one does. So what I did was that. And I was using the multimeter to look at resistances and diode test mode and see whether it passed the Mr. Bleep test, which we talk about a lot on here. So the Mr. Bleep test basically means that you can put your meter into diode test mode. And if you then test the diode, this is a shock diode, you get a single bleep. And the reading, okay? The reading being the voltage drop across the diode. Same with a rectifier. But if you short the leads, you get continuous bleep. And the reason we want this is when you're probing around on a PCB and you're looking to see what connects to where, you're trying to work out how the thing's connected up when you're fault finding. If you happen to go across a, for example, transistor, and you can see the semiconductor junctions, you know, it's good, you get the blip, you get the bleep. And if you get the continuous on the short, you can see straight away there's a short on that transistor or something connected to it, yeah? If you don't get the bleep, you have to look at the multimeter. Yeah, if you don't hear the bleep, is it open, is it short? It's not a diode junction, yeah, if your meter bleeps on diode junction, but you don't know. So, to me, that is an essential feature on a multimeter for fault finding and I would not use a multimeter that didn't have that feature when I'm trying to trace around PCBs. So I was checking to see if this one did the same. Most multimeters don't. For example, this one. So with this one in diode mode, we don't get a blip at all. You know, so you have to look at it. We don't hear anything on the short either, just read zero. So if you were doing the same sort of thing with this as this one, you would have to keep looking at the meter to see what you're doing. And every time you look away from the PCB, you probably forget where you were probing. <laughs> well, I might do. So that bleeping is important. And I was testing to see if this does the same thing. And what I did is, mistakenly, put the black lead in here and the red lead in here. So I did that, didn't really think about it. Let's go to diode range. So with this one, continuous bleep, shot key diode, one blip, yeah, 0.165, normal silicon rectifier diode, blip, 0.58. So this passes the Mr. Bleep test. And on continuity range, we get a continuous bleep. But if we connect a diode on continuity range, you'd expect it probably just to read open. And it doesn't. It does that. Eh, which is a bit odd. We can take a shot key diode. Does the same thing. Okay. I think it's increasing the voltage and manages to turn the diode on and then Effectively, this goes down to zero and it decreases the voltage and it goes off again. I'm not sure exactly. I've seen other multimeters do this sort of thing. But somebody rightly said in the comments, aren't you supposed to put the black lead in the common when you're testing diodes? And for that matter, measuring voltage, although I didn't do that. And the answer is yes, but. So, yes, you are supposed to put the lead in there. And we can now try again and we get the continuous bleep okay and we can try our diode and it does exactly the same things it was doing before okay makes no difference and while we're on the topic actually we'll connect this up wrong again go to volts range yeah can we measure volts on the amps connection what do you think guys yeah because 
I think we know, or you probably will know with the multimeter that effectively from here to here is a very high resistance, but when you're measuring in current range, the multimeter is a very low resistance. So what happens if I take my bench power supply, we turn it up to 31 volts, the maximum that will do, and we connect our multimeter on the amps connection to the power supply. Yeah, let's try it. So in there, in there, and what happens? Well, it just reads 31.6 volts. <laughs> which is correct. So it doesn't actually matter. Let me put it backwards, I'll just read the negative. Okay, minus 31.6 volts. So it doesn't make any difference. Can you see that, guys? There is a difference, which I'll talk about. But from the point of view of testing volts, ohms, continuity, diode, and for that matter, capacitors. Oh, there it goes. They always take a few seconds, these multimeters on high value capacitors, yeah, 2.34 millifarads or 2,200 is actually is microfarads, okay. So it reads them just fine. And anything else you would do using this terminal, it doesn't really matter if you put that in the common or the A. Now, that applies not only to this multimeter, but if I go to my other multimeter here, stick this into the 20 amps one. So with this multimeter, again, I'm in ohms range now. Continuity works just fine. We can check a diode and continuity range on this one. Doesn't act crazy like the other one. Diode mode, fine. Measure a resistor, 10K resistor. Yeah, 10K. Volts, AC or DC by the way. 32 volts, 31.6 volts. So that does it as well. Why? Well, let's just have a look at how the multimeter actually works. And it all comes very clear, actually. So your multimeter. Common volts current. OK, when you're measuring current, what you actually do is pass the current through the multimeter. So you would connect whatever is the source of power, PSU, into the current in. This can go into your load. And then this back to the, the naught volts, yeah, like that. Or, because it's the same thing, but different, but the same, you could connect your source of power into your load, out of your load into here, and from here back to your PSU. It's a circuit, and the same current flows through every part of the circuit, so it doesn't matter where the meter is, it will be the same. But is the multimeter really reading the current? Well, not directly, no. What happens is, inside here, You'll have a fuse, or you should have, and you will have a low value resistance called a shunt, and that connects to there. The shunt, probably something in the region of 50 milli ohms, not mega ohms, okay, but a low value resistance. And then the multimeter actually measures in current range. The voltage between here and here. It's measuring the voltage drop across that resistance. So it's still measuring voltage and the internal circuitry will be set to such a point effectively that that gives a reading in ohms. Yeah, or the equivalent in ohms. So that's how it works. But the main thing is to look at this. This connection and this connection are both basically connected to each other via a very, very low resistance. The fuse should have practically no resistance and the shunt as well, not much more than no resistance, okay? And we can prove this. So we'll go between the common and the amps, okay? Those two and these two on this one. I'll then set the fluke to the low ohms range on here in actual fact, so it has a 40 ohms range, 
Okay, I can even calibrate this. Okay, zero. We measure the resistance between common and A. And what do we have? Well, the paper says it's basically zero. And it's basically zero. Okay. And the same with this one. Basically zero, or very close to zero. Okay. So that means that this point and this point are both connected to each other. So when I'm measuring voltage or diode mode or resistance or capacitance mode when it's pulled in like that to all intents and purposes is the same as if it was pulled in like that and that's why it worked now you may think okay fair enough you can measure like that but whatever's monitoring the voltage here inside expects a very low voltage across this shunt so you might put too much voltage into the circuitry well, quite possibly, depending on the multimeter, especially these type, that sensing circuit probably isn't even connected to there unless you're in current range. But the other point is that this resistance is so low, you're going to get practically no voltage across there anyway, no matter what voltage you measure on the meter. So you're very unlikely to damage the meter. That's not saying you should do this, by the way. I'm just explaining why it worked, okay? Well, let's see if we can actually measure the resistance between these two. And we can't do it with this, but we can probably do it with this. So we'll go to 200 milliohms. Just short this together and zero it. Yeah, okay. What's the resistance between the two leads when they're connected between common and amps, yeah? Well, that's reading about 136 milliohms, and let's try on the other meter, the Zoe. Similar, slightly higher. But remember, these leads have some resistance. So let's disconnect the leads. And let's see if we can get the Kelvin probes down here. That's reading 42 milliohms, 42 and a half. This one, probably the same, but we'll see. Lower, so they use different value shunts. This one is probably actually a 50 milliohm, and this is probably a 25. So they're using different value shunts, but it's a very, very low resistance. A couple of points. One is that this only works on the amps range. If I go to this multimeter, which has a milliamps range, because the current is much lower, the shunt is actually a higher value. So although this is effectively connected to common, this one isn't. Okay. And the other interesting point, is there any use to this knowledge? Well, there is one useful thing about this. And that's if you want to know if the fuse is blown in your multimeter, the current fuse, because it's not working properly or not working. You could open the multimeter up, but you don't have to. We'll use this meter to measure, and that's because I happen to know the current fuse is blown in this one. So let's see. On this one, we just go between amps and common, the resistance range, and it reads basically zero. That means the fuse and the shunt are okay. This one reads open. So this one, the fuse is gone, all the shunters are gone. Yeah, chances are it's a fuse, but you'd have to open it up to have a look. So there's actually one useful thing we can take away from this. All the rest, well, I think it was fun and interesting. So you understand a bit more about your multimeter now. You understand why this worked, even though it was connected up wrong. Yeah. And the more we understand, the better we get at our electronics repair. Hope you enjoyed that. Ciao for now, guys.